course, I'm your host, Dan Hewen. Sitting next to me is John the Dirty Man Wilson. Hey. We have a fantastic show for you this evening. Our guests are Richard Cloutier from CJOB. Big round of applause. Yeah. <laughs> One of my heroes. Mm -hmm. And also our musical guest tonight is Black Optic. We're in the back. Yeah. We've got a whole bunch of people. I'm excited. Yeah. I might dance. We'll you see. Might dance. John might dance. I don't know. It's rare. Is it dancing music, guys? Sure. 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 Yeah. <laughs> <Perfect>. <laughs> well, then, sure. John, dance away. Well, that sounds know. good, Dan. Does that sound good? Dan, you know it's it's cold out now, which sucks, because now I can't ditch my old furniture in the river. I thought we were going to gently get to that. You just... No. <laughs> I just wanted to start I, with I that. Here, I was going to say Christmas is on the horizon. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> go with the paper. No, no. Actually, yours is way better. Tell me about putting the furniture in the river, though. How, how, why do you do that? Well, every time someone's getting rid of a couch, I like to trade off for a new couch. And the, and the weird thing is... <laughs> What, I like new couches, <laughs> new used couches. And they have this rule, this weird rule, where you can't put couches in garbage bins. I've so the river's right there. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Actually, John's building faces the river. If you had enough strength, you could just shove it off of, what is it, the eighth floor, mm -hmm. off into the river. Yeah. Yeah, which isn't so bad. I know, yeah, no. You could start your own dock. But it's fun to like kind of ride it down the bank. You know, you get one time toboggan. Into the river? <laughs> well, when it's frozen, you toboggan. Oh, John. Okay, it's not that bad idea. that it's frozen because you get to toboggan. Now, I know that Christmas is on the horizon. Oh. Because of a few things. The calendar? They're no longer. <laughs> <laughs> You're on fire tonight, John. Uh, yeah, because of the calendar. Right. Yeah, also uh, because. Uh, they're not selling Halloween candy anymore. There are oh, bows yeah. in stores. And most of the homeless are sleeping inside now. Mm -hmm. And actually, interesting story. I live in an apartment with my mother. Okay. I said it. Yeah. Wow. And old, yeah, oh, come on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I live a glamorous lifestyle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I walk a lot of stairs. So basically, she was going to her car the other day, and a very homeless looking man walked out of the basement door of our building, looked at her, and then urinated on the building. Mm. <laughs> did, did he maintain eye contact? <laughs> for, for most of it. No. It was four in the afternoon. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it was super aggressive. Anyway. Well, yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I just throw my winter coat on and head out the door. Right. Yeah. You know what you look like when you're wearing your winter coat? You look like a kid who just learned you know, to potty train. Yeah, take that. Yeah, that was well thought. You know what? <laughs> you know what you look like when you're wearing your winter coat? Oh, okay, what? You look like a guy with a straight jacket on who just ate too many Ritz crackers. <laughs> Not insulting at all, because I like Ritz crackers and straight jackets. Yeah. Hey, you know what you look like? <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back with the news. <laughs> Who's playing this week at Rumors Restaurant and Comedy Club? From November 21st to November 28th, it's Dave Hempstead, as seen on Comedy Now and at the Winnipeg Comedy Festival. Details online at www.rumorscomedyclub.com. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Week Thus Far News Center, AKA my 2005 Dodge Caravan, it's time for the news. <laughs> Astronaut Chris Hadfield was in Winnipeg this week. He did interviews with local media, skipped the line at the Tim Hortons at Red River College, and had a massive book signing at Manali Robinson. So many people showed up for an autograph, bookstore employees had to stay awake for their shifts. <laughs> Said Hadfield, Grant Park reminded him a lot of space, or Grant Park Mall, rather. It's bleak, desolate, and everyone wears diapers. <laughs> A list recently released showed the most haunted places in Winnipeg, including the former San Francisco store in Portage Place Mall. <laughs> Stories tell that at night you can hear the sound of farting novelty gifts going off while restless souls search eternally for gargoyle bongs. 
Oftentimes, it can be difficult to tell with all the back and forth and media chatter just where a city is financially in terms of growth and development. In an effort to cut through the fog, we want to welcome to the program urban affairs reporter Michael Bloomquist to help us understand where we are as a city. Thanks for having me, Dan. Well, thank you for being here, Michael. As you know, we've got a lot of recent media coverage. A fair amount of it was negative for how we handle our finances and projects. What can you tell me about this? Well, Dan, as you may or may not know, economists measure true economic devastation to an urban area in units known as Cates. Cates? <laughs> is there a reason for that name, or is just does it stand for something? Nope. No reason, just a super weird coincidence. I guess so. So what can you tell us about where Winnipeg is on this scale and what the scale means? Well, Dan, I'm afraid the news isn't good. Uh, the scale actually goes up to three, each level marked by different levels of municipal incompetence and malfeasance. A level one Kate City might just be kind of stupid with its money. It may, for instance, build roundabout in areas that don't need them, where emergency vehicles can't fit down and that do absolutely nothing to uh, modulate traffic flow. Or, or it may build bike paths that go absolutely nowhere, and those bike paths will just be existing roadways which are repainted. So the worst of both worlds, basically. Exactly. Sounds super dumb. What city would do that? Excellent question. A level two Kate city will allow its infrastructure to crumble to almost a laughable extent. It may even have a building called the Public Safety Building that is crumbling and serves as a danger to the very public it claims to serve. <laughs> or it may allow its streets to degenerate to the level where it's ranked as Canada's worst roads a couple of years in a row. Couple of years? It's almost like they didn't learn anything. Almost. The scale actually goes up to three, and at that level, expect every major public works project to be massively delayed, over budget, and poorly constructed with accusations of cronyism and incompetence rampant. <laughs> expect previously canceled rapid transit projects to be introduced at a much higher rate, yet simultaneously massively reduced scale. <laughs> and even those projects will likely never be completed. Wow. <laughs> Sounds like huge levels of incompetence and evil. Yes, but you're, meeting, you're missing one vital ingredient in a true level three Kate City. A mayor with almost unprecedented levels of not giving a fuckitude. Wow. Care to elaborate? Well, say you were walking down the street with a completely full bladder and no other forms of liquid and you see an individual on fire. Now, a normal person with regular levels of giving a fuck would be expected to urinate on that individual in an effort to save them. Of course. <laughs> Our computer modeling indicates that a level three Kate's mayor, faced with that situation, would likely drink his own urine. Okay, that's, that's probably where we should leave it. Michael Bloomquist, thank you very much. All right. ah. Liberal Party leader Justin Trudeau came under fire after his campaign submitted an evite to a ladies-only event that featured a picture of Trudeau offering a flirty gaze. Trudeau accompanied it with a tweet stating he was looking forward to cocktails and candid conversation. Additional invites were submitted on hotel lounge napkins and matchbooks, each with a room number scrawled in borrowed lipstick. <laughs> the scent of Ralph Lauren cologne lingering. Ketchup tyrant Heinz is closing their Ontario manufacturing plant to save money. This is causing 740 people to lose their jobs. One employee tried looking on the bright side, however, saying, well, at least I won't be drinking as much ketchup. <laughs> Health officials in Belgium recently tested a copy of the novel Fifty Shades of Grey from the library and found that it contained trace elements of both cocaine and the herpes virus. While the amounts were insignificant, one thing is certain, the library just got a whole lot sexier. <laughs> Scientists tested a variety of books, including a selection of books from the game Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, which contained noticeable levels of what was described as Mountain Dew and raw virginity. <laughs> a man in Philadelphia has been charged with reckless endangerment after driving his BMW down the museum, the Philadelphia Museum of Art steps made famous by the Rocky movies. 
The man's nearing, or the man's hearing is scheduled for December 18th and Rocky 7, Rocky versus an automobile, <laughs> is slated to start shooting in 2014. <laughs> Two dogs were found in the Nebraskan Alps with an artificial Christmas tree. A Chinese guy showed up and killed the dogs. And I'm like, hey, somebody should have saved those dogs. <laughs> yeah. Don't know what I expected. Uh, all right. Private photos have reportedly been stolen of actor Nicolas Cage engaged in sexual intercourse with his ex-girlfriend. Those who have seen the photos in question feel that Cage's penis is overacting. <laughs> Last Friday, Egypt announced a planned multi-million dollar renovation for its famed and very originally named Egyptian Museum in Cairo. It was also announced a now defunct old wing of the museum is to be wrapped entirely in strips of white cloth and to have its furniture removed through its doors with long hooks. <laughs> An Alabama man lost a court battle last week to have the right to keep his wife's remains buried in his front yard. In his verdict, the judge stated, I know this is a sensitive situation and the loss of a loved one is always hard, but sir, you're gonna have to go down to the cemetery to have sex just like the rest of us. <laughs> And now for a special community focus piece. This past Saturday, the annual Santa Claus Parade was held in downtown Winnipeg. Here to share his thoughts and spread some holiday cheer is the big man himself, Santa Claus. Oh, hey. Hello, boys and girls. I hope you've been good this year. <laughs> hello, Mr. Claus. Oh, hello, Dan. Good to see you again. I'm not sure we've met before. Oh, I see you when you're sleeping. I know when you're awake. And you've been a very naughty boy. Very naughty. <laughs> right. Why don't you tell us about this past weekend's parade? What, what do you mean, tell you about it? You weren't there? I usually just stay in, because traffic's really bad downtown. And I don't know, it's hard to get around. You know what I'm saying? Well, well, of course, you know, of course traffic's backed up. Everybody's there to see Santa. Boys and girls of all ages. Where were you trying to get downtown? What, the king's head, maybe? Well, yeah. Oh, nope, road's closed. Oh, well, maybe you want to go to the forks. I guess I want to nope, go to the... Nope, street's closed. <laughs> Say, maybe you want to get sauced and score some Dee's trim at Whiskey Dicks, eh? I hey? Well, f***! You, the roads are closed! <laughs> Santa's in town, b Now get some of this thick North Pole action! Alright! Get, get out of here! Alright! Yeah. Merry Christmas, everyone! This is and so you all go f yourselves! Oh my god! Wow! I'm gonna be playing fast and loose with the beeps this time. <laughs> That's the news, everybody. And we'll be back with Richard Cloutier. Are you tired of the same old coffee news month after month? Well, grab a copy of Week Thus Far Monthly. Yes, Week Thus Far Monthly from the creators of the Week Thus Far television show. If you're interested in having it in your business, contact Dan Hewen at dan at weekthusfar.com. That's dan at weekthusfar.com. about the next guest. What about you, John? Yeah, also, yeah. Good, I good. Agree. Our next guest, actually our first guest <laughs> this evening is a, uh, a fantastic uh, newsman. He's worked for CJOB. He was the host of Richard Cloutier Reports and is also the news director. Give it up for Richard Cloutier. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what? Hey. I wanted to congratulate you guys on your wow. 70th episode. Oh, thank you. Thank you. A little so something much. I picked up. Wow. Wasn't that my birthday present from a few episodes ago? Is this Redbox? It's Redbox. <laughs> That's nice. Just thought you'd, you know, want oh, to pass like a red it on. And black thank you. Box yeah, have a seat, man. Do I get to sit here? No, you, yeah, you get to sit here. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Join us. This time. <laughs> so congratulations. You've made it to 70. Yeah. 
It's been a long time coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did uh, 70 in my first two months at CJOB 20 years ago. <laughs> just saying. Okay. Fair. Sure. Fair. No, just saying, though. He's just dropping it in. He's not gloating. That's no. perfect. That's excellent. <laughs> Took us like two years. Just also. I understand. No. <laughs> now, Richard Cloutier. Can I call you a Klooch? We'll see. <laughs> Maybe start with Richard. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'll call you Rick. You could. <laughs> Can we Now would that be R I C or R I C K? Oh. Because once upon a time, once upon a time I went through my R I C Rick phase. Oh. Tell us about that. It's kinda like <laughs> Rick Ocasek. <laughs> See? Yeah. Yeah. You can call me Richard. <laughs> <laughs> we were discussing backstage, too. Possibly, possibly, if you got yourself a dog that could snip out news stories and call him Turner that we could call you Turner and Kluge. <laughs> <laughs> and the two of you would go around town sniffing out stories. Mm -hmm. We could do that. We could do that. Turner and Kluge works? Good. All right. I like the name of that pooch. <laughs> Turner and Kluge. You'd be Still a bonus if you could uh, sniff out pooch. <laughs> Sounds like a raiding party's downstairs. Mm -hmm. Now, Richard Cloutier, how long have you worked at CJOB? 20 years. 20 years. I'm in year 21 now. And in that time, did you always do the show Richard Cloutier Reports? No, no. Uh, I started uh, doing a 12.35 to 3 o'clock shift. And it was, um, it was inventively called Richard Cloutier, comma, afternoons on CJOB. Oh. And because the whole reason why was he, he, I replaced a guy by the name of Grant McGinnis. And his show was called McGinnis. And they figured they couldn't have a show called Cluche. <laughs> so I was Richard Cluche, comma, afternoons on CJOB. <laughs> because I was a nice guy. <laughs> How long did you do afternoons? Uh, about three years. And then somebody else got fired, and then I ended up going into another time slot. Radio is a tough business. As is the nature of the business. It is. You got to eat the person that you want the job of. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> um, uh, and how long have you been the news director for? Because that's also a whole other. It's a whole lot of things. Um, about four years now. Yeah. Like I, so I did the news director, and then I did the morning talk show as well. And uh, yeah, it was long days, long mm -hmm. days. And, and now I'm also assistant brand director. We don't have program directors anymore, we have brand directors. Just oh, like really? you guys are a, a brand. That's correct. <laughs> yeah, we are kind of a brand. Now, you said earlier, uh, I don't know if I'm remembering this right, but you were talking to the prime minister earlier today? Yeah, we a uh, surprise interview with the prime minister. Surprise. So did he show up at your place? No, or? it was a surprise for me. <laughs> <laughs> he was revving the engine of a van in your front yard. <laughs> Richard! <laughs> so, this, so this is how it works. You, you get a mystery call the Friday beforehand. And they say, uh, would you be interested in interviewing the Prime Minister? And you say, come on, who is this really? <laughs> and, and you check him out and, oh yeah, it happens to be one of the, the, the Prime Minister's uh, staff. And then we'll call you on the weekend. I didn't get a call on the weekend, but I got a call this morning saying that the Prime Minister would talk to you between 1.16 and 1.23 today. <laughs> and uh, so Seven yeah. minutes. Yeah. yeah. So I, I stretched that sucker out to eight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's a pro. Joke's on him. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he did acknowledge, though, that he's not cheering for any one particular team in the Grey Cup on Sunday. Oh. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, I wouldn't want him to take a stand on anything, would you? <laughs> would you like a writing job that doesn't pay in money? <laughs> <laughs> kind of doing that for 20 years. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, now, you're the news director at CJOB. Uh, obviously, Rob Ford has been in the news almost every day now for the last couple weeks. Um, what, what do you think about the whole thing? What is your take on Rob Ford? Do you think he should leave or do you think he should stay? Because a lot of people think that if he ran now, he would just, maybe not now, now, like today now, but yesterday now, he might have still been able well, to. Well, Ford Nation, though, you never know. See, I think people like Sam Cates and Stephen Harper, they love the idea of Rob Ford. Because when yeah. you compare Rob Ford to, to Sam Cates, it's just like, you know, Sam's not so bad, is he? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Stephen Harper, uh, what Senate scandal? Mm -hmm. At least Sam Cates doesn't knock people over when he runs past them. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's true. There's probably about a 220-pound yeah. difference there. The only, only thing is, Rob Ford, I, I, phys I think he physically could not kick a kid in the face. That's true. <laughs> no, that, yeah. that is true. That is true. Yeah. Yeah. So he doesn't have to worry about that. He could yeah. work the shins for a while. But that's <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Rob Ford, will be, it'll be interesting to see if he indeed hangs on. I think he will, of course. He has no power. Right. Uh, you know, he's, he's a figurehead mayor. And he's all over the United States. Television He's on Fox. He's on CNN. To the point now where we're kind of a little bit jealous. How dare they take our crack smoking mayor away from us? <laughs> <laughs> and it's just the super crack smoking mayor of Toronto. Oh yeah. man. Are That's all it is now. Oh god. We're kind of a we're kind they of proud of that, aren't we? Yeah. Cuz we're we're normally a pretty boring nation. Yeah. I don't know about you, I'm pretty happy now that we've got Rob Smo Ford crack smoking mayor of Toronto. <laughs> it has served for interesting conversation. Mm. It has. But the news guy in me hopes that he gets help and help soon, but it, he, he's, not, he seems to be surrounded by an yeah, Not that soon, though. Like not. Yeah, uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe a few more news cycles. Like in yeah. a month, get some yeah. help. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you don't want the guy to, you know, severely fall into a ball of depression, and then start selling crack, because then that'd be even worse. You'd be on CNN for that. <laughs> Fleshy ball sells crack. <laughs> 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 All right, that's not fair. <laughs> anyway, Richard Cloutier, thank you very much for joining us. We're all out of time, unfortunately, but it has been a pleasure. An absolute pleasure. And again, congratulations on making it to, to 70. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Thanks for right. having yeah. We'll be right back with Black Optic. For a taste of royalty, head to 120 King Street. Just look at that wood. Week thus far tapes at the King's Head Pub every Monday live at 8 p.m. Ladies and gentlemen, it's that time again. We're at the end of the show. I want to thank Richard Cloutier for being here. Turner and Clooch. Sniffing out the stories in the city of Winnipeg. Big round of applause for the man. Can I uh, thank uh, Oh yeah, I'd like to thank John for once. Yeah, thank me. Um, also our sound guy, Matt Thiessen. Oh right, yeah. yeah Matt let's thank Matt Thiessen. Big round of applause. Yeah. Not the Matt Thiessen I went to high school with. Um, <laughs> now before we do anything else, we've got to thank the sponsors, it's Rumors Comedy Club and the King's Head Pub. And just so you know, this weekend at the King's Head Pub, there will be two bands playing Friday night. There is Mrs. Hoo Hoo and Who? Saturday night, November 23rd, we have Main Street Blues, which is a Rolling Stones cover band. Fantastic. Fantastic bands, yeah. Whatever. Mixed reactions, but that's good. You're going to have fun. Uh, now, uh, aside from that, Rich, would you like to, Richard, Rich, Rick, Rick with a C only? No, I'm looking forward to that Rolling Stones thing. If you got a rocker, or what is it? You got a walker, you're a kind of rocker. You're a Rolling rocker. Stones rocker? Yeah. No. Walker with a, rocker with a walker. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like I, know, I noticed you parked your walker in the corner. Earlier. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Just wanted to know something, though. Um, Hang on here. Okay. Well. Just wanted to know if you validate parking. 
<laughs> you may, I was told you did. You may be on your own with this one. <laughs> and I have been towed. Anyway. Damn cable uh, access. We're going to give it up for our fantastic band tonight. These guys brought a whole slew of people out, which is awesome. They have been uh, making lots of noise in the back. <laughs> Uh, anyway, you're going to have a great time watching these guys. Give it up for Black Optic. Woo! Thank you.